In this video, we're going to build an HTTP API in Java that is able to sustain 1 million requests per second. And we're going to actually make a load test to see that uh, this value of throughput is actually sustained. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use Netty. What is Netty? Well, Netty is technically an asynchronous event-driven network application framework built on top of Java non-blocking I.O. Basically, it's the engine powerhouse behind many well-known web frameworks like Spring Boot or Spring Web Flux, Vertex, Quarkus, Elastic. Search, Apache Spark, Apache Cassandra, and many others. Now, the reason I chose to go with Netty for this experiment is because all the other frameworks that are built on top of it actually add overhead. And to be able to see better results for this throughput test, I decided to use a lower level library like Netty to remove all that overhead and go uh, with um, basically a bare bone framework. Now, how does Netty work and what makes it so efficient? In simplified terms, Netty has two thread pools. One is called boss group and another one that's called worker group. Now to see what those actually do, let's imagine that we got a new connection on socket one, basically a TCP connection, an HTTP client makes a get call to our Netty application. What happens is that the boss worker thread is gonna accept that connection and it's gonna basically create a channel, which is technically an abstractization for a connection in Netty world. And it's gonna assign that channel to an event loop. So basically, boss worker threads are only in charge of accepting connections, creating channels, and dispatching basically connections to event loop threads. You can see this channel assignment process just like creating a data pipe between the socket and the actual event loop thread that's going to handle that socket for its entire lifetime. An event loop thread can, of course, have multiple channels um, that it handles, right? Now, what happens inside this event loop thread is going to basically take all network events for all the channels that it has assigned, it's going to execute the request pipeline, which basically consists of the business logic of that request, like deserializing the request and executing any other code that we program for that request. And finally, it responds back and it does all of that in a loop. Basically, in this way, traffic is processed event driven, right? So as soon as it lands on the socket, the event loop reacts to that and it's going to execute the pipeline in a reactive way. So in this way, Net is very efficient because everything is distributed independently, we got no contention, no locking, and this is where the main performance numbers actually come from. Now let's see that in code. Basically the application that we're gonna test consists only of 135 lines, so it's quite small. The only thing it does is to basically respond with a very simple string back. But first let's take a look on the dependencies, right? So we use this particular native version, 4.1.114. We also use this uh, transport native ePoll dependency for Linux, which basically is a signaling system uh, designed for Linux kernel that basically optimizes the access to IO events from Linux kernel. And we also have some Prometheus related dependencies to be able to extract metrics from the app. And of course, we have a plugin that allows us to create a fat jar. Now let's see the actual code, right? So we got this main class. I'm going to skip the constants for now, where we start with a default exports initialize. This comes from Prometheus which basically helps us to initialize some JVM related metrics. Basically, those are some default exports in terms of memory allocation, GC thread related metrics, which are packed in the, into this dependency and uh, they're basically connected to the re metric registry so we can see JVM related metrics. Now, next we're defining the actual event loops, right? We got a boss event loop, we got a workers event loop. We only need one thread for the boss event loop. And for the workers, we need uh, twice the number of CPUs because we, we have basically an IO bound workload. This is how we define our server, right? This is where we actually use the ePoll dependency that I showed earlier, which basically provides direct access to Linux kernel signaling for IO events. This is where we set up the boss and worker groups. And we also have a few settings like to keep alive connections, to reuse the address, and this is where we start and bind the server to our 8080 port. Now, the way we actually add our pipeline logic is on this uh, flow right here. We set the child handler to this custom class, socket channel initializer, that extends this class that comes from uh, Netty directly from Netty library. And on this overridden method in a channel, we basically get access to the channel pipeline that's going to be executed. We add HTTP server codec, HTTP object aggregator, which means that we are dealing with HTTP requests. And finally, we also add this HTTP request handler that is our custom handler that we want to execute for each request, which is of course defined here. We override this method channel with zero and this method provides a channel handle context and also a full HTTP request. 
Now what we're doing on each request is basically a very simple logic, nothing complex, we just uh, extract the path so we can see if um, we have actually a metrics path because we also have Prometheus that monitors this app and it uses this suffix for the path. I just reused the, the one uh, from Spring Boot uh, because uh, I already had a setup and uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't want to change that. If we have a metrics path, we just write metrics and return. I'm gonna go through this method uh, in a second, but if we don't have a metrics path, so any other path, right, uh, that's being used by an HTTP client, we're just gonna respond with this content buffer that says hello from netty. This is just a string that's stored as a byte buff, which is a, a netty native type that basically stores this particular buffer as a read only. And basically to create a response, we just duplicate that and we use that basically right here. When we say context, write and flush, and we put a response here. We also increment the number of um, requests, the, the metric. We have to set also the content length. And very important is the keep alive um, setting. We want to reuse connections, right? Because otherwise we have to close them. And this basically creates a lot of trashing. And for this kind of throughput test, we need to reuse connections. This is a mandatory step. And if the request has keep alive um, header set on true, we just put that back on the response so, so that the client knows to, to reuse connections. If we don't have that, we just close the connection directly. Now on the metrics path, when we write metrics, what we do here is to just take all the metrics from the registry and write them using uh, this string writer into basically a, a byte array that we set on the response. And basically using keep alive header, we do the same magic to respond back to the client, right? So we just extract metrics, put them into a byte array and the byte array is just flushed on the response. And of course, for an error, we're gonna uh, go on the catch clause. So this is basically the application. The code is quite simple. As you can see, it's quite primitive. It doesn't have things like dependency injection, auto configuration, it's just, it's just a plain application that, um, responds with a very simple string and it's already loaded into the high performance testing framework that's deployed in AWS. I got here basically uh, one system under test instance that has this particular instance type and two load generators that will actually push traffic uh, into it. The instance type is technically this one uh, C7GN 2x large. It's basically a Graviton instance, so ARM processor with eight CPUs and 16 uh, gigs of RAM. The application is already installed on the system under test VM. It's basically connected to this uh, um, uh, Grafana dashboard. I have a tunnel, uh, so don't worry if this is localhost, but I have a tunnel connected to it so I can see actually metrics um, directly from my localhost. And here we can see the stats uh, for the app itself, but also for the system under this VM, the virtual machine in terms of CPU memory and for load generator machines as well. What I'm gonna do next is to basically start the actual load test. I'm right here logged on the load generator machines and I'm gonna run this command. I'm gonna use the WRK tool, which is a very efficient load testing tool for HTTP APIs. So what I'm saying here is that I use a threads, I use 300 connections, this duration doesn't really matter, just a big number here. And here we got 500,000 requests per second. This is this R, this is what it says. Latency means that we want uh, latency metrics uh, back uh, or along the, the way. And this is the, the endpoint, right? Uh, this IP basically is the private IP for the system under test uh, virtual machine, as you can see here. And we're gonna run this command to see how it actually goes. We got, yeah, a threads initialized. 100 minutes, eight threads, and let's see how this actually goes, right? Five minutes, 40k requests per second. We got also some threads running, about 20 threads. And we should actually see resources going up on all the boxes, uh, actually on, on the system under test box and also on the uh, load generator one in this case. Getting closer to 500k RPS. Right, we can see really well that the throughput basically stabilized. We can see some GC poses here, 1.8 milliseconds. And also the allocation rate is um, 700, about 700 megabytes per second. That's, that's quite low. This means performance, right? It goes really well. We got 60% CPU usage um, on the VM that runs the JVM. And also we got about 50% usage on the load generator. Now we're gonna basically launch a similar command on the other load generator, which basically does the same thing, the same parameters, 500K, 300 connections, eight threads. Yep, so we can see the traffic actually reached 1 million requests per second with a four millisecond GC pause. We use G1 in this experiment and 1.39 gigs per second allocation rate, which is 
really good for this throughput, of course. Not so much memory usage because we just, um, you know, respond with a string. No, basically we don't have any business logic in this app. Throughput is sustained. If you look on the CPU usage, we can see 94% here. So it's quite saturated this box from, from a CPU perspective. This doesn't mean that we can, if we go with a higher uh, virtual machine, uh, more resources in terms of CPU and memory, we're gonna get, of course, uh, more traffic, right? Accepted for that single virtual machine. This is how you can build a Java REST API that um, responds with a very simple string and is able to sustain a million requests per second. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.